Okay, so I had this cool idea that I was going to make a an arrowhead uh, and print it uh, with my 3D printer. I did a little research and I found that the threads on an arrow tip are 8 by 32. So I couldn't find these threads anywhere except I did find this STL file on GrabCAD that says ball spring plunger 8 by 32 threads. What I can do now is just take this STL file and import it into SketchUp and modify it. So I imported this STL file, uh, which you can do in SketchUp. There is a plugin that you can download that will allow you to import STL files and bring them into SketchUp, which is really cool because now I brought this in and I've already done the repair of the threads. I had to take that little notchy thing out, whatever that little pin was, I took it out. And so you can see where I repaired the threads. I just went back in and actually just drew all those little lines to recreate the mesh. So now, and I'm just going to ignore this plunger thing because I don't think it's going to, I think that's just going to print as part of the threads or part of this piece. So I'm not really worried about it. But now what I'm going to do is add an arrowhead on here. So I'm going to make this a group. So what I draw now will uh, be ignored. And so what I've done here is just make some guidelines and this is an inch and a half across in that direction. And then it's two inches out. So I'll just draw this like that. Then to give it sort of a wedge shape, I'll draw from there to there. And you can see what I've done. And then I'll flip it over. Do the same thing there. I'll just draw a line. You gotta be careful and get your lines in the right place. <laughs> or your meshes, your faces won't work out if you don't get them in the proper place. And that's why you want to make this piece right here a separate block and, the, and this radius thing right here because when you go in here and draw that shape right there, this radius sometimes will want to interfere with it. But since I've made it a separate group, since this piece is its own group, it doesn't interfere with these faces. This is just sort of an experimental arrowhead, so if it works, if these threads don't work, what I'm going to do is just make an arrowhead that will slide over the tip, and it can be epoxied. Actually, I almost forgot. <laughs> I have to actually export this now as an STL file. So that's simple. You just select all of your geometry and you go to export as a, well, yeah, export DXF or STL. And you want to make sure this is millimeters and select STL. And so I'm going to call this arrow one. Okay, so the next step I like to do is go to NetFab. They have this free online service. It's a cloud service. It allows you to upload your um, your STL file, and then you will go to your email, and it will give you a link to the completed process. And over here, you can actually just go ahead and click on download. So what it does is it takes all those surfaces and fixes any kind of uh, problems uh, with those surfaces. In other words, you may have missing uh, entities that you know didn't close the surface or create a solid. Okay, our next step is to 
import this baby into Repetier, which is my the software I use to communicate with the printer. So I'm going to click on Add Object, and I'm going to go find the Arrowhead Fixed. It'll say Fixed as part of the file name. Okay, and you see, it'll drop it in there. See, there it is. And I'm going to click on Center Object. And make sure it's dropped it down on the bed properly. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, what you'll have to do next is what we call slice it. And that you just click on slicer up here. So now I just have to click on slice. And you can see down here it's generating the code. And it was a relatively small object, so it's not too bad. So now what I'll do is I'll uh, heat the bed. I'll click on this button right here. You don't really have to heat the extruder. You know, turn it on right away because it heats really fast. But the bed takes probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes to heat up. So I'll go check the, uh, I'll check the printer right now to make sure it's ready. Okay, so how I'm printing this is I have a glass bed on top of my factory captain sheet, which is I'm trying to actually preserve that in case I sell the printer. I want to keep it fresh. So I've got a piece of glass with the painter's tape, which works pretty good. And I've got my slurry here that I'm working on right now. And as soon as the bed heats up a little bit, I'll, I've already applied some of it, but I like to get it kind of to where I can see a haze on there. I found that works better. And then uh, this works good because after you're done, you can just pull up the tape and replace it. And you can see here, get a lot of questions about this. The uh, filament is 1.75 uh, millimeter uh, ABS plastic. Goes into the head. It's heated up. It's extruded and laid down on the bed. And right now, I'm going to make a roller, a uh, roll feed thing. But right now, I have better luck with just laying the roll down and letting this come up on its own and then as it gets twisted I turn this so that it untwists and so that's kind of the process to get to get started so when the bed heats up here we'll start the printing mm -hmm. 